Dear students, welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am VN Prabhakar, visiting faculty in the Archaeological Sciences Center of uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar. In the paper Pre and Proto Historic Cultures of India, we will be looking into the module Characteristics of Indus Civilization, Society, Life, Ways, and Religion. These are important aspects in the Indus Valley Civilization and at the end of this module you will be able to understand some of the major hindrances or the understanding the major uh, characteristics of the social and religious institutions of the Indus Civilization and also to understand the society, the life ways and religion of the Indus uh, Civilization. So it is very uh, difficult kind of uh, uh, understanding for proper uh, evaluation of the society as such of the Indus Valley Civilization because of the lack of tangible evidence. We have lack of tangible evidence due to the non-availability of uh, 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 scripts, non-availability of uh, deciphered language. Uh, because of the undeciphered characteristics of the Indus script, we don't know what it is uh, written. We don't know what kind of information we can gather. We can uh, rather point out to the character structure of the Indus script, but not fully understand it. But scholars generally agree, but the uh, Indus civilization, the society was a stratified society with certain hierarchical institutions because of uh, the certain uh, habitational characteristics we find in the settlement pattern. Some other scholars, they also think uh, that the Indus society was a caste-based system, but again, it, it has to be substantiated by uh, very good evidences. One of the archaeologists, Stuart Piggott, he argued for a theocratic society with the chief priest uh, as the ruler. This could be uh, based on the uh, finding of the so-called priest king and other kind of uh, personalities depicted in stone sculptures that led to this kind of argument. Again, this lacks uh, uh, enough uh, uh, support in the form of material evidence. But uh, looking into the settlement pattern, we have a distinct uh, hierarchy in the settlement pattern, in the arrangement and the overall structure of habitations in the Indus uh, cities. If we look into the most of the Indus cities, it is uh, consisting of uh, twin mound habitation, one higher mound and one a lower mound. It is often interpreted uh, uh, due to the structured, class structured society. It, it is also a general consensus among several scholars that the citadel, it could have housed the elite population or the ruling class or a kind of nobleman kind of population and the lower town, it could be the abode of uh, common inhabitants like uh, workers, like uh, different craftsmen and other uh, uh, classes of the society. Looking into the uh, differential mounds of habitation, uh, one of the examples we find is from Kalibanga. Here the excavator, Professor B.B. Lal, he identified th three mounds instead of two mounds. One is a high mound known as the uh, citadel, one is the lower mound, it's known as the uh, lower town, and that is the largest mound, and another smaller area, which Professor B.B. Lal thinks it could be the area where the common people could have uh, uh, lived. So this kind of uh, identification, this kind of interpretations are being made based on the uh, arrangement of the different habitations. If we come to a site known as Dolavira, it has uh, four prominent settlements. Each one of is fortified of among the uh, four prominent uh, settlements we find within the overall walled area. Uh, named as Castle, Bailey, Middletown and Lower Town. Three are very well fortified and Lower Town comes within the overall fortification. So based on this uh, overall architecture, overall arrangement of this uh, settlement, the excavator also feels that the citadel could have been uh, uh, occupied by the rulers or the elites, uh, followed by the Bailey, occupied by the noblemen assisting the ruling community. And the Middletown, it could have housed the agriculturist merchants, craftsmen and traders and the low turn could have been the habitation for manual workers and laborers. But these things could be substantiated by an horizontal by a horizontal excavation looking into various aspects of the household objects and all kind of evidences coming from within to interpret in a better manner. Another site uh, which has also kind of yielded a large number of uh, 
walled settlements is Harappa. Harappa we have at least four prominent mounds. One is Mount AB, Mount E, Mount ET and another mound which is uh, under the present village occupation. There are four walled mounds and uh, among Mount E it has been identified that a certain quarter, certain area of Mount E it was inhabited uh, by craftsmen engaged in various kind of activities like pottery production, flint napping, shell cutting and there is also evidence that uh, the pottery kilns located in the East area I mean it was under continuous occupation for nearly 800 years. So it clearly indicates a certain class of people, the potters, they were occupying the same locality for over 800 years. So this is a clear indication of uh, the hierarchy and uh, identification of different areas for different craft activities. And another Im very important uh, industry is Mohenjo-Dodo. Uh, initially it was identified with uh, two mounds only, one the citadel mound and the lower mound. But now recently the surface reconnaissance, the surface uh, exploration has brought to light several mounds and also here several craft activities like uh, bead manufacturing, stoneware manufacturing, they are all located to certain uh, localities only and they are all occupying a certain uh, area of the city and for a quite continuous period. So these all these evidences uh, they are a clear indication of how the society could have been uh, uh, arranged, how the different classes they were identifying with each other, how a particular place can be identified for a certain kind of uh, specialized craft activity. This is also reflected in the, in the symmetries. Like for example, Lothal is one such site in Gujarat. There's a elaborate symmetry located to the northwest of the settlement. Here we, ha we have found multiple uh, uh, symmetries, multiple uh, interments, uh, both uh, uh, individual as well as joint burials have been found. Here, the biological studies have been carried out based on the uh, skeletal remains. It has been identified there is a uh, clearly cosmopolitan nature in the uh, Indus assemblage. The skeletons found from the Indus sites, it indicates a cosmopolitan nature. It is a mixed population. It is not a, a one set of population. It is a mixed population, people uh, coming from different regions, merging together and carrying out different craft activities. Another interpretation from the Lothal findings is that they have a close biological relationship uh, between the hunter-gatherers of the Langnaj region. This has been uh, uh, kind of identified through biological uh, uh, interpretations. So it, kinda, it could have been uh, both ways, the hunter-gatherers and the Indus people, they have existed, uh, coexisted. Uh, as typically ex uh, identified in the Gujarat region, there could have been a harmonious uh, coexistence and the Harappans, they were uh, uh, getting uh, more raw materials maybe based on the uh, tribal knowledge, based on the local population and it is also a kind of uh, give and take relationship. And it, the various kind of symmetries excavated from across the Indus territory, like for example, the symmetry R37, which is a Harappan, uh, a classical Harappan uh, symmetry from Harappa. It also has multiple burials. We, are, we have excellent evidences of uh, how uh, even, a, even a bead manufacturer, he was uh, interred with uh, unfinished beads coming, coming from the uh, craft locality. So all these kind of uh, things clearly establish uh, the existence of different craftsmen in the, living in the society. And similarly, we have a clear-cut uh, continuity within the R37 and the Symmetry Edge culture. Symmetry Edge is, a, uh, is, is, is another uh, symmetry area in Harappa. It uh, belongs to the post-urban or the late Harappan phase of the in the civilization. We have a clear continuity between the burial forms, the kind of uh, furniture, even though the pot burials, they, ha they appear in prominence in the late phase of the Symmetry Edge phase. Looking into the life ways, I mean, if you, if we as a society, there are various life ways. One has to carry a, a certain kind of profession to support his uh, uh, existence. So we'll, we'll find the evidence of uh, various kind of life forms in the industrialization as the population they are living in villages, towns and cities and also campsites. Uh, so it could have been a society consisting of a variety of professions ranging from merchants, nomads, fishermen hunters, farmers, rulers, state officials like administrators, 
attendants, uh, traders communicating with different region, maybe uh, they are contributing more to the cosmopolitan nature of the society, shopkeepers, workshop owners, gatekeepers, regulating uh, entry and exit from within the city, tax collector, it could have been another uh, profession, uh, profession, sweepers, they, uh, sweepers and uh, cleaning the drains and other areas of the society, there could be garbage collectors because the bigger, bigger uh, drains of the industry cities, they tend to accumulate lot of uh, uh, dirt and a lot of uh, garbage that should have been uh, cleaned periodically to have a continuous flow. There could have been artisans, there could have been ritual specialists and other professionals. There could be a large number of professionals uh, and uh, that could be understand from the kind of uh, material culture we get from the uh, Harappan cities. Like the excavations at Harappa, it, it uh, indicates many specialists were living uh, or they could have worked together in uh, close distinguish, uh, close association with each other and also in the different neighborhoods of the particular part of the uh, city. So one of the very important evidence which we uh, find in the uh, inner cities are hordes of jewelry. This hordes of jewelry is a clear indication of the presence of merchants because unless until you have a, a, a big hoard collection or a merchants, they can only uh, support uh, this kind of uh, hoards that could have been procured from the manufacturing centers and kept for uh, other distribution areas. It could, it could have been an intermediary location and uh, uh, due to uh, chance it was discarded and later the archaeologists find this kind of uh, hoards. One such hoard is the uh, Aladino hoard which has a complete uh, waste bands, one of the uh, three waste bands found in the entire Indus uh, civilization made of long barrel cylindrical uh, beads along with other silver and gold jewelry. There are also evidences of various kind of uh, ceramics like a typical ceramic uh, uh, is the cooking pot. The cooking, cooking pot of Harappans, it is very uh, uh, distinguishable. It has a carination on the, on the shoulder portion uh, and uh, it has a bright uh, red slip on the neck portion and a rustication or a black, uh, black color uh, uh, thing do, uh, at the, below the shoulder. It's a clear indication of a, a cooking. And this kind of uh, ceramic along with other ceramics, along with other uh, uh, ceramic discards, uh, slags, uh, unfired pottery, then uh, vitrified pottery, they are all clear indications of uh, uh, presence of potters as a community, potters as a profession, along with the kilns, large number of kilns. Like as I told you earlier, the site of Harappa, it has yielded a continuous evolution of uh, kilns located in a particular portion of the Mount E, nearly 800 years of existence at a particular uh, place and uh, many levels of uh, kilns have been excavated one above the another. It is a clear indication of the evolution of the uh, ceramic industry there. It is a big uh, profession uh, because of the large scale demand because every other utensil, every utensil has to be made of clay because metal was highly uh, valued and priced. So potters, they were an important community in the uh, Indus, uh, civilization. Other craftsmen, other professions like a finance maker. Finance maker is also a very important uh, specialized craft activity because of its uh, high value because they were duplicating stones. They are duplicating the highly prized semi-precious stones into fayans. Fayans can be manufactured into any kind of color. One can uh, induce a coloring agent and produce various colors. It could be blue, bluish green, brown, red and duplicating the precious stones. So fayans manufacturers, they, were, they formed an important uh, uh, section of the society. Similarly, the shell manufacturer, shell bead manufacturer or the shell bangle manufacturer, they were also an important uh, uh, profession because we find thousands and thousands of uh, shells. We find complete shells, we find uh, uh, cut shells, cut at a certain angle to remove the uh, bangles, complete bangles initially to expose the columella and then the columella it was used to manufacture various kind of inlays, beads, weights, various kind of uh, uh, ornaments and uh, uh, in instruments. So these kind of evidences coming from several sites like from example uh, Bagasra and Nagwada in Gujarat, they have brought to light a very good evidence of uh, shell manufacturing uh, evidences and also sites like uh, Navinal in Gujarat, it has yielded a large number of shell waste products cut 
cut shell uh, products it clearly indicates the extensive uh, shell manufacturing industry one of the other important profession or the uh, life phase of the industry people is the metallurgists the coppersmiths they form a very important component it is a highly developed technology and it is uh, restricted to only a certain uh, part of the population only it is not known to everybody else so we have a wide range of uh, copper implements from uh, equipments from weapons from beads to bangles all this kind of a copper implements we find in the uh, harappan uh, a tradition and apart from this the finished products we also have slags we also have uh, uh, evidence of furnaces and we also have prills prills are the initial products of copper smelting if we heat the uh, copper ore the copper is uh, melted and it forms in the form of prills which is again reheated reheated to produce the final copper product so these kind of evidences of or clear indication of the existence of a very good uh, Uh, copper uh, smith industry and each and every state uh, important state uh, uh, sites we have this kind of evidences one more important profession we can uh, think of uh, in the harappan uh, tradition is the beads stone beads is one such industry it is very very important because of the large um, external trade activities in which the harappans were engaged we have uh, various type of stones uh, nearly 40 to 50 minerals Uh, were exploited by the harappans and in the gujarat region alone it is uh, the uh, it is the place of a large number of agate carnelian mining sources raw material sources which were supplied far and wide and we have several sites in gujarat where we know the bead manufacturing techniques how they were making perforations in the beads how they were using different kinds of drill bits to make perforation into the bead so this is one one important activity and they were also highly decorating the stone beads this is a this is an important aspect which was highly prized in the mesopotamian world so this is another important uh, uh, life way or the profession of the indus uh, people another is the textile because without the textile garments cannot be produced and we have uh, evidences of negative uh, evidences and pseudomorphs on on uh, metal artifacts the impressions of textiles uh, and the scanning electron microscope analysis of uh, these kind of uh, impressions can uh, indicate the weaving technology the kind of uh, pattern in which this uh, the cloth were manufactured this can be found that we also have evidence of spindle wools spindle wools uh, they are the tools which were used to produce threads from the cotton uh, cotton initially obtained from the plants so these kind of tools are also found it can be also used to produce thread from the wool so these are all excellent evidences to indicate the uh, proli- uh, prolification of the uh, textile industry large scale presence of the uh, textile industry in the indus um, uh, cities also the presence of loom weights some grooved bricks it has been identified as loom weights uh, from harappa that is also another in the, uh, evidence of the textile uh, industries so what kind of uh, textiles could have been present i mean there are evidences of silk from uh, harappa side of harappa even the type of silk has been identified as tassar silk has been identified from harappa also the presence of cotton and jute have been identified from the sites of uh, harappan cities and another important profession carpentry without the Uh, aid of carpentry nothing could have been uh, uh, survived nothing could have been uh, uh, fulfilled in the harappan uh, household because doors and windows have to be manufactured and uh, wood was available in plenty and naturally the carpenters they uh, carpenters they were the uh, important uh, profession during the indus civilization they were manufacturing various kind of doors and windows as uh, as examples of uh, jalied or latticed windows uh, we find uh, as representations in the terracotta models from the sites like harappa so it is a clear indication that how they were uh, using various kind of woods to produce uh, this kind of uh, latticed windows and also different kind of doors they were uh, they were producing and we also have evidence of coffins wooden coffins from the harappan burials so wooden boxes were made from specialized woods and the wooden lids were also manufactured there are also evidences of uh, boats river boats and sea ships so all these kind of things could have only been manufactured with the help of a very good carpentry profession they were highly specialized in various kind of activities and they helped 
largely in the overall urbanism and this is one of the important profession i would say and uh, building the cities is also another important uh, occupation without uh, the aid of brick manufacturers without the aid of large scale uh, brick kiln activities no city would have been uh, uh, built up majority of the cities majority of the villages they have been built with uh, unbaked uh, sun dried mud bricks but cities like harappa and mohenjodaro they were largely constructed using baked bricks with a specific ratio so the presence of a professional or specialized brick manufacturers would have been existed without that large scale manufacturing is not possible because baking brick to a high degrees of temperature to a, uh, attaining a, a very good uh, temperature is very much important because of the strength because of the achievement of the strength without that these bricks cannot be used for a very longer period so these kind of uh, evidences clearly point to the existence of a several kind of professions which were contributing not only to the day to day life of the uh, population and also satisfying to the elitist attention because some of the craft activities they are only for the elitist because of the manufacture manufacture of highly specialized jewels and ornaments and also for the amusement of the uh, people amusement of the public there are several other professions so we have evidence for uh, musicians we have evidence for uh, uh, drummers we have evidence for uh, certain masks which are found from the harappan site point to certain uh, artistic activities also there could have been an amusement class of people there should be singers drummers and musicians and uh, one uh, terracotta mask from mohenjodaro is a clear indication of uh, performance of certain kind of uh, rituals so these they, they, these are all other professions which were um, supporting the indus population maybe uh, keeping them busy with all kind of activities we also have uh, this large shells complete shells which can be Uh, used as a trumpet because a very good uh, sound can be emanated from a shell and that could have been used for important rituals and functions and also terracotta vessels terracotta vessels in the form of uh, birds and animals they could have been uh, an amusement as well as plaything for the children but also an important uh, uh, musical instrument also as a supplementary musical instrument we find this kind of terracotta vessels and also rattles global terracotta balls with a handle and uh, it can be shaken and a different sound can be produced and one terracotta mold uh, uh, from harappa it shows the depiction of a drummer a dokla a, a drummer show, showing a uh, beating a beating a drum it is uh, uh, depicted in one of the terracotta tablet uh, discovered from uh, harappa so these are all different uh, Uh, activities that can be uh, f- found out and we have large scale uh, uh, depiction of uh, animal figure in some of the animal uh, figures like a dog they have a collar around them and they they could have been highly specialized they could have been used by the masters they could have been used for hunting as uh, assisting them for hunting many wild animals and the uh, the various kind of toys toy cot frames and uh, different toy cots along with the bulls it there are clear indication of the type of uh, uh, type of uh, some sort of amusement some sort of uh, race uh, existed during the uh, in the civilization this this type of uh, uh, carriage ways they could also been used for uh, as um, race activities for the amusement of the public like bullock cart ra- race this could have been used for so all this kind of uh, activities are supplementing the main population it is it is not only one of the main occupation but also supplementing and all these people they were fed enough uh, uh, by the agriculturalist it is an important profession without agriculture there is no uh, enough crop for the population there is not a, a surplus in food production so the agriculture profession it is an important most important aspect of the in the civilization and how do we know about uh, uh, agriculturalist i mean we know pre harappan or early harappan level from kalibanga where we have a plowed field the excavation of a plowed field from kalibanga it is a clear indication of uh, how the different crop patterns were adopted is it was an evidence of a double crop pattern along with that we have a terracotta 
plow evidence from banavali and also terracotta yokes from nowshero so these are important evidences pointing towards the agriculturalist profession existing during the harappan civilization and along with that we have a wide variety of animal bones both domesticated and wild ones the wild ones they are the ones which were hunted and for that only the dogs could have been trained to hunt certain wild animals they are which are, which are very slow in nature that can be easily attacked by the dogs but the large number of animal bones of the domesticated variety it was also an important aspect because highly specialized Uh, people pastoralists they were specialized in uh, using the cattle uh, for extracting milk products and also for meat processing so this is a, another food supplementary apart from the agriculturalist profession the animal husbandry was another important profession which sub- supported the harappan population in uh, to a certain extent because of the continuous supply of food throughout the year and also we have evidence of uh, various uh, tools various weaponry which could have been used for hunting like arrowhead spearheads it could have been used for hunting uh, it could have been used for uh, hunting and killing the wild animals but also there are uh, several other uh, uh, evidences like uh, fish bones from several sites and also fish hooks fish hooks of copper it is another evidence which clearly indicate the wide exploitation the riverine sources the rivers they were excellent uh, sources for food in the form of fish and other uh, uh, products so they could have been hunted the fish bones obtained from various sites they are all clear indication of the exploitation of the fish and also the depiction of fish on the pottery it is also an indication of the knowledge which the harappans had and also another evidence which we find for exploitation of the uh, fish is the presence of otoliths otoliths they are they are the uh, inner part of the ear because the inner part of the ear is composed of three uh, bones uh, which is uh, preserved well in the archaeological context and a large number of otoliths they are found from uh, sites for example from navinal we have found a large number of fish otoliths which is a clear indication of the exploitation of the fish obtained from the nearby sources either it could be marine or from a river rain sources so coming to a different aspect i mean the people they were uh, living in a society their different life forms and how they could have been bound together how the ideology how uh, the different life forms could have been supporting for a uh, for a overall uh, ideology religion could be one uh, aspect which could have uh, bound together the entire population it is also a, an important aspect which has to be studied in relation of the evidences which we obtain from the indus sites from the excavation of various sites from which we can deal we can identify certain uh, indirect evidence we don't have the again a written source mentioning any religion any form of worship but from the indirect evidences we can build up a story we can try to identify certain forms of ritual certain form of forms of worship so uh, some of the earliest identification like uh, sir john marshall he was the director general of uh, archaeological survey of india when he identified the indus civilization when he looked into the evidences like a, a seal in which, in which a seated uh, dt is shown he identified it to be a proto shiva and uh, he identified several phallic objects from mohenjodaro and uh, he identified it with hinduism and uh, he identified that the hinduism has had its roots uh, in the indus civilization but there are several other objects also like uh, terracotta female figurines uh, which are generally identified as mother goddess figurines then phallus vulvas horn deities trees bathing platforms fire altars they are all have been identified and interpreted by various scholars have having to be represented for some sort of a religion so we will be looking uh, looking into them one by one uh, among the uh, most prominent uh, uh, examples of this religion or the identification of the religion is the terracotta figurines the female terracotta figurines they are very 
uh, few in number when compared to uh, other uh, animal figurines and they are also restricted to the Punjab and Sindh area only and they are highly decorated some are uh, decorated with elaborate headdress uh, with fan like uh, feature they have elaborate jewelry so they have been generally identified with the mother goddess mother goddess is a fertility cult in which we worship uh, the perpetuity of the life the the cyclic uh, nature of the life after every monsoon there is a production of crops and after every uh, event there is again a regeneration of an activity so that's how the cyclic process continue on and on so this has been identified with the mother goddess and the progenity the uh, female feature which is the basic uh, life form which uh, helps in regeneration of the human kind that is also identified with the regeneration of life in various forms so that's how the elaborate of uh, female figurines of uh, Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, they have been identified as some sort of uh, cult and it is, it is one of the interpretations only and also several seated uh, male sculptures from Mohenjo-daro or Harappa. So they have also been identified uh, as uh, represent representing some sort of a deity or some sort of a priest who are ruling uh, the city states of the Indus civilization. So, for example, the seated uh, male sculpture from Mohenjo-daro, it has a typical uh, uh, feature and it is also closely resembling the priest king, so-called priest king. Priest king, the lower portion is missing, missing. Here the head is missing. So, otherwise, the more or less the depiction is same. Some sandstone uh, head sculptures from Mohenjo-daro, they have a very elaborate uh, braided uh, uh, hair decoration with a fillet held together by a fillet. So these are all indicating of some sort of a uh, deity in the uh, Indus uh, uh, civilization or the society. So we have uh, also terracotta male figurines, but they are very much different from the female figurines. When the female figurines are shown with a very elaborate jewelry and a short tunic, uh, uh, the, but the female, male figurines, they are all, always shown in a nudist form, but some of the male figurines, uh, they also have uh, jewelry accompanied with them, but uh, they may or may not uh, represent any deity because of uh, the lack of evidences uh, we have. So one of the most prominent uh, uh, identification or one of the most important uh, uh, identification in terms of religion is the so-called priest king. The priest king uh, a sculpture from Mohanjadaro. It is widely interpreted, uh, interpreted by several scholars as uh, representing a uh, priest who was also the ruler because of the uniqueness of its depiction, the kind of elaborate, uh, uh, el elaborate dress material with the trefoil pattern shown in high relief, shaven upper leaf, uh, up upper lip, uh, uh, the bearded, short beards, and also the hair held together by a fillet. And similar fillets have been found in gold from the Harappan context. So all this kind of high elaboration of this particular uh, male sculpture, it has, uh, uh, it has led the archaeologists to think that this could be uh, a deity or, or a priest or a king. I mean, again, the identification is very, very difficult in the absence of uh, proper uh, written evidences. So that is one identification that it could be a priest king who was also a priest and also a ruler. So again it will be substantiated if more and more evidences are found. But there are certain graphic depictions from the seals. One such uh, uh, seal uh, it depicts a human figure in having a horn headdress and standing inside a tree. The, tree, the leaves emanating from the tree, they are all clearly people leaf. And a human figurine is shown praying in front of the deity. So this is a clear indication. A human is praying with raised hands in front of a standing deity with a horned headgear. So we can, uh, we can identify the deity is represented with horned headgear. Maybe uh, that is one kind of identification. So this, uh, st this nailed figure in front of this deity, he is also sacrificing a goat. So the, all these kind of evidences leads to uh, think that uh, a particular type of worship could have been existed during the Indus civilization and the horned headgear, it could be the uh, insignia of a deity. 
And here in this particular seal, one can see the seven standing uh, uh, figures, human figures also is depicted in the lower panel of the seal. So they could be the deities which are uh, shown along with the kneeled uh, figure. So these are all uh, very good uh, graphic evidences and uh, several tablets, they also depict uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, evidences to, uh, pointing towards uh, certain uh, ritualistic performances like one such uh, uh, tablet here shown here it represents a human holding a sword like uh, sword like uh, weapon known as a scimitar and a seated figure is shown in front of him with a disheveled hat and this shows some some kind of a subjugation some kind of a, uh, superiority and uh, other side that's a, uh, shown is a hum, female in an upside position and uh, a plant is emanating from the vulva. So these kind of things are again uh, indicating certain kind of rituals, certain kind of uh, um, continuity in the uh, uh, reproductions and all these point to certain uh, religious uh, uh, practices. So another uh, tablet from uh, uh, Dolavira, it, uh, it, depicts, uh, uh, it depicts conflict between uh, uh, superhumans or uh, are a deity and a humans because one one uh, uh, kneeled uh, human figure in it show it is shown lifting two humans so all these kind of superhuman act activities they depict some kind of a religious uh, uh, significance so similarly there are other war scenes also war scenes or subjugation scenes one such tablet here a human is shown subjugating a large bison in front of a seated uh, uh, person shown in a yogic position. So all these things uh, again indicative of a uh, performance of a ritual or a performance of a sacrifice. Here the bison could have been sacrificed uh, in front of a deity. So this could be another uh, example of a ritualistic uh, practice. Among the seals which depict uh, give a graphic depiction of the uh, so deities is the so-called Proto Shiva seal from uh, Mohanjadado. Here the central theme is a three-headed deity wearing a buffalo horn headdress with a fan-like central feature. So it's a very prominent uh, uh, thing seated in a yogic-like uh, uh, posture, seated in Padmasana and a low-footed stool with two gazelles. One of the gazelle is broken below the pedestal. And some scholars interpret even the face it is uh, depicted with three uh, phases like the frontal and two side positions. So three phases are depicted uh, uh, of this uh, deity. So this is also a ethyphallic figure which is represented with bangles, wristlets and a series of graduated uh, necklaces. Uh, because ethyphallic means a phallic uh, is shown clearly uh, depicted in the deity. So representation of buffalo, rhinoceros, tigers and antelope and uh, elephant, they are all shown on the sides of this deity. So this is also known as the Pashupata and uh, sometimes identified with the Shiva in, in the earliest form. So this is another identification by a group of uh, scholars pointing towards a certain kind of uh, religion existing in the in the civilization. One more uh, depiction on a seal is from Dolavira again here a standing deity again uh, again inside uh, uh, inside a plant it again it could depict a people uh, uh, tree here the deity is also shown with the horned headgear and a kneeled human figure is shown in front of the uh, deity it could be a devotee and uh, he, he uh, touches the ground in uh, a symbol of uh, reverence and the lower portion is depicted with a standing goat. It could be, uh, it could be uh, drawn by the devotee for sacrifice. So all these kind of uh, uh, things are, uh, are similar to region to region like a similar kind of depiction is shown in uh, uh, one of the terracotta tablets from Kalibanga. Here also a horned headgeared deity is shown with a, with a devotee dragging an animal. So all these things are depicting some sort of rituals performed in f uh, front of a deity and coming from different regions. It, uh, one is from Kalibanga, one is from Dolavira, one is from Mohanjadado. These are all widely separated regions. So this also indicates some common uh, religious beliefs. So one more uh, uh, tablet, uh, it, it is also very interesting here, a tiger is looking back over shoulder, shoulder and a person 
we sitting on a branch of a tree and it could also have some sort of a significance some scholars identify it we again a control of a, a, a bigger animal with some super power so this kind of rituals they, this this kind of depictions indicate the desire of the harappan desire of the uh, in the civilization people to have a control over certain uh, uh, bigger animals which could be controlled using certain rituals another prominent uh, evidence for uh, religion uh, could be the presence of large phallus stones similar such stones have been found extensively from a site known as dolavira in gujarat here free standing uh, uh, pillars have been found with a clear depiction of phallus so it is a clear indication of a some sort of a uh, religious belief existed in this form of uh, a part of the indus civilization other things which are very similar to the phallus are the omphalos uh, or the navel uh, uh, stones which are uh, found from several sites and some are from harappa these are plain column so stones with a flat bottom and a curved uh, top similar to the phallus but without any uh, details so th this could be another form of the a phallus, phallic, phallus worship. So several sort of worships where uh, um, uh, religious uh, motives were shown and uh, worship forms can be identified from their representations. One more uh, uh, thing is the horn deity motives which is closely re related with the depictions, other depictions from the seals is the on the is the similar ones on the pottery so we have several horn deity motifs depicted on pottery examples from several sites ranging from ramon dairy to kodiji to padri again from different regions even in regions in rajasthan we find this kind of depictions on pottery even from a kodijian vessel in other places we have found this kind of depictions so this this is another common motif common religious motif uh, which was uh, widely accepted in uh, far away regions different regions and could be representing one one sort of a religious uh, belief the seals and ceilings they have a wide variety of uh, animals depicting on them the prominent being the unicorn it could be a mythical animal it, it is not a bull definitely not a bull but it is a mythical animal and again that could be representing a faith representing a some sort of a religious belief similarly depiction of elaborate uh, uh, decoration elaborate uh, depiction of a bull in the indus seals it also depicts it also indicates a certain importance attached to this kind of uh, uh, bulls uh, unicorns they as i told you it attains a very important uh, uh, in position in the Indus civilization, there are also depictions, multiple forms. Some uh, unicorn, unicorn is uh, depicted along with uh, a buffalo and a bull. So there are multiple forms also, and composite animal representation also formed in all, also in association with people leaf. So all these things they are all very closely associated. The people uh, leaf uh, or people tree, it is shown. In, uh, in relation to a standing deity with the horned headgear, the people leaf, it is shown with a unicorn. So all these things are indicative of some sort of religious beliefs, religious uh, significance, and certain rituals have been associated, like a sacrifice of a goat, a figure kneeling in front of a deity showing a worship. So these are all some clear indications of uh, religious practices. There are also portrayals of uh, composite animals, like composite uh, animals depicted on seals, also composite animals which are manufactured freehand, that is on terracotta, some with three heads. Multiple heads can be found, I mean uh, one such is found from uh, Naushara and uh, other sites also, even tigers with horns, that is that is not occurring in nature but tigers they are depicted in horns means again they are associating certain powers of uh, compositiveness and a tiger and a bull tiger and a buffalo so some sort of uh, uh, identification of uh, composite strength is given to a, uh, a mythical animal and a strength is drawn for uh, the population by praying into the deity so unicorns and other things are all indicative of this kind of uh, beliefs Similarly, the trees they were also worshipped like uh, the trees are definitely associated with the uh, deities and the trees they are also depicted in, uh, in, uh, um, in free forms also like in several uh, 
as uh, tablets we find the acacia tree it is depicted on a tablet on a platform uh, sort of thing so it, it indicates they were worship in its uh, individual form also similarly the people uh, tree could have been also worshipped and the people tree was definitely shown in association with uh, uh, unicorn association with uh, uh, other uh, deities both on seals as well as uh, tablets so there are several other motifs also several other symbols which could be also of some religious significance like swastika it is a very ancient symbol and it is also associated with several regions several religions and it is a very important uh, symbol another symbol is the endless knot design endless knot design which is found in uh, indus civilization and it has a very long continuity even found in the megalithic tradition later uh, times and even some of the medieval uh, mason marks they have this kind of endless knot design so there's a long tradition associated with this endless endless knot design again it can be interpreted as a, a continuity or reproduction it is a perpetual cycle of reproduction and death so that could be one sort of interpretation associated with this endless knot design also uh, people leave it, it could be uh, another independent design like we are seeing in the um, finance bangles they are in the form of a people leaf one gold bangle from a site in western up it had a people leaf format and a well in mohanjodaro it has a people leaf uh, shape so all these things uh, they are all clear indication certain uh, not only uh, the formative scenes not only clear uh, narrative scenes but also symbols they are also very very important in the indus uh, religious uh, religious beliefs so the religious rituals they are all accompanied by performing uh, um, using certain uh, receptacles like in the form of uh, shell trumpet the shell trumpet was used uh, for performing certain religious rituals like with the shell ladles they could have been used for performing rituals so these are all supportive evidences which clearly indicate the performance of uh, rituals while worshiping uh, uh, worshiping a deity a particular deity or a uh, prominent uh, figure likewise water water is a very important uh, aspect in the indus civilization because of the uh, presence of uh, great bath in mohenjodaro we can see the importance associated uh, uh, with the water platform bathing platforms and other uh, ab evolutionary uh, rituals which uh, which were performed by the indus uh, civilization they were also sources of purification they were also useful in performance of a uh, variety of rituals and we find a very elaborate uh, water management system at dolavera which has a series of uh, Uh, water reservoirs there which could have also been used for performing certain rituals like was one more uh, one more uh, religiousistic aspect or identified with the harappans is the fire rituals so the presence of uh, uh, pits filled with ash bone and other debris from uh, harappan sites like lothal rangpur wagad nageshwar and kalibangan it has been identified with the fire altar uh, this kind of uh, a uh, depiction of various uh, rituals various uh, religious tech beliefs by the harappans and uh, supporting of the various life forms they they are all go hand in hand and it is a huge cosmopolitan uh, uh, population living in the indus cities performing various kind of professions various kind of craft activities living together in these cities efficiently managing their uh, Uh, lifestyles uh, and overall contributing to the entire development of the urbanism of the indus civilization which led to prosperity for over 700 years so this is an important aspect of the uh, indus civilization and uh, i i hope uh, you can uh, uh, refer to the website epg patshala website uh, for other modules if you are interested and learn a lot about indus civilization